knew I was losing her. Excuse me, have you seen my wife? I don't think she wants to see you anymore. What? Sarah! Don't touch my car again. I'm going, that's not the kind of touching I meant. Jock, he stole my wife. Can you arrest him? Sometimes it's better just to accept these things. <laughs> Bombs, utility belts, utility uh, belt. green arrow has a bow and arrow. Okay. Why do you need all those? I'm making up my own superhero. He needs a weapon. That'll do. Cool. All it takes to be a superhero is the choice to fight evil. Shut up, crime. Don't steal. Don't deal drugs. Don't molest kids. Brutal assault by the Crimson Bolt continued last night. You shoot him? No. That's cool. I could be your kid's sidekick. Ta-da! How do I look? That's inappropriate. Frank is the only thing that will save me. We will take those suckers down. That's good. Let's do this. You just sit here and wait for crime to happen? That's right. <sighs> this is so boring. Yes, I can tell you now it's the not about good and evil. This is about she love me more because I am interesting. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time of day you've chosen to join us here. Thank you so much and welcome to WTF or What the Fuck Did I Just Watch with Adam and Brayden. I am Adam. And I am Brayden. And we just watched a film from 2010. It is James Gunn's Super. And Brayden, you suggested this one. Why did this one come to mind? Yeah, I don't know. I uh, probably saw this first time a few years back and was just scrolling through Stan the other day and saw it come up and remembered it being kind of amusing and kind of like, what the fuck? So I thought, perfect. Yeah, yeah, it definitely suits uh, our needs this <laughs> week. Uh, I hadn't actually seen this film before. I knew it existed, but uh, just never just never got around to watching it. Uh, I knew within... The first kind of three to four minutes of this film that I was watching a James Gunn film. <laughs> so I, was, I thought that was pretty cool. At least you can tell the director's style and I could see through this film how he got hired to do Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. yeah but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about this film. I think, I think I want to hear some of your opinions before I really settle down on how I feel about this one. No, that's, that's fair enough. Absolutely. Um, I guess before we do anything, we should probably kick off into the synopsis. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we've got a bit of a brief synopsis. So, Super 2010, Frank Darbo is a hapless fry cook when his wife Sarah falls off the wagon and dumps him for Jackess? Jax? Jackus? If I can remember. Yeah. Yeah. Jax? Jax. Jax. Perhaps it's a solid J. <laughs> Jax. <laughs> be a soft J. Um, yeah, Jax. Uh, Jax. A drug dealer. Frank tries to get her back by reporting her kidnapped, grabbing her from Jack's car and wailing for her to return. After watching Christian TV and having a vision, he becomes a superhero to fight evil. He sews a costume, finds a weapon, which is a pipe wrench, and looks for crime to stop. He has problems. His wrench inflicts real injury, so the cops want him for being a vigilante. His sense of boundaries is flawed, and Jack's gang has guns. Libby, a clerk at a comic book store, becomes his sidekick and it's time to go and then when it's time to go save Sarah, they go to Jack's ranch and shit gets fucked up, basically. It gets fucking yeah, real. Shit gets fucking real. So um <laughs> yeah, there's explosions and a man on fire and Libby gets her fucking head blown off. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Yeah. I was. I did not see that part coming. I was like, "God damn!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? 
Um, so yeah, basically the film ends with Sarah being saved. Um, after a few months, their relationship ends up not working out and she moves on to have kids, but they're still friends and um, Frank still loves his life. He's got a series of moments that he that he now likes in his life involving her kids and, you know, saving the day and things like that. So, yeah. 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 Shut up, crime. I, uh... Before we get into doing the complete breakdown, I did like the fact that he goes through all the trouble of reading all these all these comic books about how to find a weapon. It's just like, <laughs> fuck it, Red will do. Yeah, he's just like, okay, this guy's got utility belt and pipe <laughs> bombs and smoke bombs and batarangs and this guy's got a shield and this guy's got this and just fucking pipe wrench. Just hit yeah, exactly. in the head. <laughs> it's pretty it's good. It's amazing. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, so... Let's get into it. Uh, obviously, the film starts with Frank telling us about his two only good memories in his life, which are marrying his wife and <laughs> another, another bit where he just tell, tells a cop that a robber went down. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. Let me just explain that a, li- a little bit more clear because I think you'll probably crack it up laughing a bit there. It is really stupid. So, yeah, he's standing on the side of the road. A mugger is getting chased by a police officer, and the mugger runs down an alleyway and he sees him. Frank sees the mugger. The cop runs up, and then Frank goes, He went that way. And that's like one of the perfect moments, one of the two perfect moments in his life. I've had two perfect moments in my life. The first was when I married Sarah. The other, I was downtown. You went in there, officer. Thanks, pal. <laughs> it's, it is fucking <laughs> stupid. And I love the fact that he's drawn pictures of them. He's drawn pictures of his two perfect moments in his life and put them on the wall. And his wife, um, Sarah, comes up and she's like, don't you think the hands are a bit big? <laughs> so he's like, fuck. And he goes to the effort of like whiting them out and then drawing them really <laughs> small. Out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, oh, man. Um, <laughs> right off the bat, you, you know it's going to be a stupid fucking movie. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, as I say, like right from the start, I'm like, yeah, I can see how this guy got picked to do Guardians of the Galaxy because he gets the oddball hero thing. Yeah. Uh, I also love the fact that his drawings are in crayon. Yeah. That's fantastic as well. (laughs) He's got, yeah, I guess he's really got sort of the mind of a, I don't know, a child. (laughs) So, uh, Frank comes home and Sarah's closeted. Sorry, I should uh, should rephrase, not quite there. Jacques comes to the house and they have some eggs together. Yeah. Then Frank comes home and Sarah is no longer... Yep. At the house. Uh, all of her clothes are missing, so obviously she's been kidnapped along with all their clothes. Should probably say that Sarah was a recovering drug addict when she met. Alcoholic. Fran- al- alcoholic and drug addict, I believe. Yeah, she was everything. Um, she to it all. She wanted it all and she wanted it now. Yeah, so when she met Frank, she was recovering and um, then she sort of started to go off the rails a little bit during their relationship, but he didn't really do anything to stop it, even though he felt like he should have. And then, yeah, eventually she was gone. Yeah. And uh, so this sinks Frank into a depression. Um, you look and he really goes to the cops to say, hey, my wife's been kidnapped. And the cop's like, uh, think, nah, she, she has She just left you, bro. Yeah, I don't know how to tell you this, but your wife doesn't love you anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> Frank heads to... The strip club that Jacques owns and jumps onto his car. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where we get the first appearance of Michael Rooker and his amazing pubic hair afro. That was incredible. Oh, man. Michael Rooker was so good in this. Oh, yeah. His um, <laughs> fucking haircut. And it wasn't even like a thick afro. It was like patchy as fuck. Yeah, I know. It was, it was glorious. Yeah, wasn't it was it? beautiful. Loved it. Um. Yeah, I love I love how he's how Jock's like, look, because I'm a nice guy and you know, I was really nice to you when I came to your house and demanded that you make me eggs. 
Give me um, some of your eggs you made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I and I complimented your brown eggs and how good they were. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna let you sort of get away with, you know, the way you're behaving because you don't know who I am. But don't touch my car again. So he just gets one fucking finger. <laughs> that's not the point. kind of touching I meant. <laughs> he puts his one finger. He's like, don't fucking touch my car. He does it again. He's like, that's it. I'm out of here. That's not the kind of touching I was talking about. <laughs> you don't know who I am. So I'm going to give you one last warning. Out of the fucking kindness in my fucking heart, don't fucking... Touch my car again. A lot of empty words and I've already heard ain't gonna work tonight. That is the last time. Don't wanna talk about it anymore. Hank. Cause that ain't gonna make things I'm going, that's not the kind of touching I meant. So yeah, so Frank's uh slips deeper into his depression and has a good cry and then he tells us about the visions that he's had in his life yeah yeah this is a little bit weird i don't know like he thinks he's got some sort of gift to see those who are i don't know corrupted by satan or some shit or fucking demons yeah and then he heard the voice of god tell him to marry sarah when he first saw her yep uh, and then he watches TV, prays to God for a vision, and on comes the Holy Avenger. The oh, Holy Nathan Fillion. Who is, played, who is played by Nathan Fillion in, like, a superhero costume with a wig over the top of it, which <laughs> would be the greatest look of all time. <laughs> and the two sidekicks that he's got, like, they're, like, five foot, like, she must be, like, four foot eight in fucking no, like, flat feet. And the the dude who's like dressed like a gimp the second time we see them in the same slate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was ridiculous. But yeah. Frank believes it's a sign that tells him that God wants him to do shit. Yep. <laughs> so he heads to the comic book store to to get some research and to get one of his comics, and that's where he meets uh, uh, Liz Livy, who Liz will go Livy. on to become the Crimson Bolt. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, he's the Crimson Bolt. She's Bolty. Oh, sorry, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I do apologize. So anyway, Libby says she wishes somebody would become a hero, and they, you know, they, they one, one another get together, and they, the Crimson Bolt is born, as it were. Yeah. And so Frank decides he's going to hide in an alleyway behind a dumpster. <laughs> and just wait for crime. Which is pretty ridiculous when yeah. you think about it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah so uh, instead he goes goes to the library with a totally real beard <laughs> yeah it's totally real and i love how i love how when she's um like why are you wearing a fake beard and he's like no it's real and she's like okay and then goes to change the the, the subject and he feels the need to keep justifying himself even though she's already accepted what he says <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's uh <laughs> He does that a couple of times throughout the movie. I think it's the other time as well when the cop comes to his house and he's like, what's in the cupboard? The cupboard. Was, yeah. He's like, Nothing, nothing's in there. And he's like, okay. And then he's like, it's a dog. There's a dog in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, what are you leaving your dog in there for? Oh, he bites people. <laughs> oh, that's cop a dog person. Yeah, they're the people that he bites the most. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, you're right. He does do it a few times. But anyway, so... He uh, he goes to stand up to a drug dealer who I think may have just been selling poppy seeds stuck to incense sticks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this drug dealer kind of, you know, beats the shit out of him a little bit. Yeah. So he decides to get a weapon. Yeah. Goes back to the comic book store. Certainly does. And uh, once again, Libby's there to help him. Yep. And then he picks up his pipe wrench, and like I say, he's just like, yep. So he starts practicing hitting melons, doesn't he? Uh, I think so, yeah. He just starts hitting shit. I think it was melons. And then goes back after the drug dealer again. And hits him. Clocks him in the fucking face with a pipe wrench. <laughs> and he clocks the person he cuts in line. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, he goes on a few sort of things where he's chasing like drug dealers and child molesters and shit like that. And then the, is the one is insane where he pulls him out the fucking thing and like beats, pulls him out the car and beats the shit out of him with the pipe wrench. But what does he yell at him? He's like, you don't 
molest children. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> oh fucking hell. Um, and then yeah, he's at the at this movies or something, and the line is fucking huge, and someone cuts in the line, and he's a dick. Yeah, he's at the movies that um lining up to pay for tickets for the guy who was going to shout the guy who works at the restaurant with who's going to shout him the movie that's right <laughs> but he pays for it anyway yeah that's right it's all three of them oh fucking hell and then um yeah so this dude cuts in line and he's sort of telling him off like don't cut in line he's like fuck off dickhead who do you think you are don't fucking talk to me uh, <laughs> so he just walks off gets changed into his fucking suit in his car just across the street <laughs> comes back and he's like no Buddies. He's like, dude, who do you think you're fooling? I just saw you like a minute ago. And it fucking beats him in the face with a fucking pipe wrench. Blood pissing out. His missus starts carrying on, so he fucking clocks her too. <laughs> he hits her in the head as well. <laughs> oh, shit, it's ridiculous. Hey! Don't butt! Who do you think you're fooling? I just saw you. Oh, my God! Oh, God! Oh, no! Wait. Um, yeah, so I think that's when shit sort of started to get a little bit fucked up where he doesn't really know where to draw the line. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so he, uh, once again, returns to the comic book store and, oh, sorry, no, I take the fact, Libby comes to find him to invite him to a party, but also she's worked out that he's the Crimson Bolt. Yep. To which uh, he uh, denies it. What's that? He denies it. Yeah, of course. Well, you've got to if you're a superhero. Yeah, of course. And, and so he decides he just to drives instead... his fucking car around with his license plate and shit for everyone to see. <laughs> uh, he decides now's the time to take on Jacques and his boys and manages to get shot in the leg in the process. Yep. And, uh, yeah, winds up at her party looking for help because they know who he is and he can't Garbage go home. Garbage bag suit. Yep. Yeah, he's fucking... He turns up to fucking party <laughs> taped up to his neck wearing fucking garbage bags so no one can see the suit <laughs> <laughs> it would have been better off turning more better off turning up in his fucking underwear i reckon yeah <laughs> shit um but anyway libby kicks everybody out of the party yep and uh re- reveals that he is in fact the crimson bolt to her and she gets fucking rock hard over this no oh, she goes crazy she gets sopping wet <laughs> oh, fuck it up. <laughs> so I think after, so she agrees to let him just st- let him stay there because he can't go home. Because they know that it's Frank. Yeah, the, like least convincing costume <laughs> of all time. And he drives away in his fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. And, um, yeah, as he's sort of getting better and everything, she decides to come in and she's like, I need to show you something, Frank. And she does a couple of cartwheels and some <laughs> terrible fucking martial art moves. Um, she tries to get him to fight her, even though he's just been shot in the leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and after a little I bit I love of... how foul-mouthed she is throughout this whole thing. Too. Oh, yeah. She's fucking proper nuts, that chick. Yeah. It's, it, it, you can see the comparisons to Kick-Ass. Yeah, Definitely. Definitely. I, yeah, I sort of thought that too. It kind of felt a bit, a bit kick arsey but not quite as ridiculous. Yeah. Like, in some parts it is, but... Some parts is insane. Yeah. kick ass just keeps escalating, whereas this sort of goes up and down and up and down and up and down. Um, yep. And then, yeah, so she ends up sort of becoming his sidekick. She, yeah, she has a costume that she tries on to show him. Yep. Which she keeps being trying to be all sexy, and then he's like, what are you... What are you doing? Yeah, she wasn't sexy. <laughs> not for you, Braden? Uh, nah, not for me. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so they decide to go fit, fight crime. She gets fucking bored as fuck. No, no they don't decide to go fight crime. Yeah, the, sorry, yeah, they do. You're right, she gets bored as fuck behind the dumpster, so she decides to find the guy who keyed her friend's car. Yeah. <laughs> Almost fucking kills him, gets broken glass and shit in his face. <laughs> she smashes a fucking like crystal pitcher over him. Yeah, and then she's got like Bang. a fucking statue, and she's bit ready to like lay the killing blow on the fucking guy. Um, he stops her, and then 
I think at the end of it, he's like, so you sure this is the guy who keyed your friend's car? She's like, pretty sure. <laughs> and so then he basically fires her and goes to kick her out at the gas station, but manages to pull up alongside the car that has Jacques' men in it. Yeah. So instead, he basically gets the shit beaten out of him. Yeah. Until Libby fires up. Yep. So and runs into one of them with a fucking car. Yeah, squash, squashes in between the car and the wall. And then Frank shoots the other one in the chest. Yep. And the news is all like, maybe we're wrong about this guy. He keeps killing people who are criminals. Despite the fact that Libby's like hanging out the window going, don't fuck with us, we'll fuck you <laughs> up. It's like kids around. And she keeps, she's she's keeps like, saying Frank as well. Yeah. <laughs> she keeps saying his name. <laughs> <laughs> how this fucking guy doesn't get arrested is beyond me my god so so then uh on the way back to libby's place frank says okay she can be his sidekick again and that gets libby even wetter in the pants oh my god and so libby rapes frank yeah you fucking hell <laughs> And she makes him put the mask on and everything. Yeah, she's... Yeah, because if it's the mask, he, the, the Crimson Bolt isn't married. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, the Crimson Bolt can fuck Bolty. It's all good. <laughs> um, and then that sort and of... Thing vomits. Yeah, he vomits and then he uses his, I don't know, fucking God Visions or whatever it was. To, yeah, yeah. To see um, his wife in the vomit and just, that gives him his inspiration to go, right, we need to fucking go and save her. So they go to the gun store. <laughs> fuck me does shit just go to an extreme level at this point there was, because they yes. just get everything there was an yeah, an interesting montage of instead of like a training montage it was just like a buying Mine. guns montage <laughs> yeah. but then it with bulletproof vests and pipe bombs and all sorts of shit that fucking Frank's now built Yeah. and they head off to Jacques Ranch where they kill the first few guys they encounter and they get shot themselves. Frank's shot in his bulletproof vest, which they fluff knocking the wind out of him. It's okay. He goes over to find Libby and the fucking effects that were even better than the Dark Knight with fucking Two Face's face occur here. <laughs> as a huge chunk of Libby's face is missing. Yeah. She goes, and I did not see that coming. Nah, me neither. I remember the first time I seen it, I was like, whoa, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Your yeah, fucking like, face blown off. I, I, I come like, oh, she's gonna be hurt or like really fucked up or something, but I did not expect that. Nah, not at all. That was crazy. Yeah, and he pretty much just loses his shit. Fucking lights all these pipe bombs, blows everyone up, shoots down a bunch of people. Got no idea where the fuck he got these skills from. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. Busts into the house where a big drug deal was going down and his wife was about to get raped by a big black dude who um, Kevin Bacon shot because he was backing out because shit was going down. Is he called the Crimson Bolt? Yeah, because the Crimson Bolt People was there. are actually scared of the Crimson Bolt. Yeah. Um, but you can see why the fucker throws pipe bombs. Exactly. Fucking hell. So he, <laughs> he get, ends up on the roof, um, takes out a guy up in the top floor or something and then ties his body to a rope swings it down to the lower level of the window and then the two guys who were in that level go to look and it says he's put a note written in blood on it saying behind you he fucking breaks in the window behind and like shoots him down Shotguns. and shit gets Shotguns fucking one in the head. yeah and then gets fucking um uh, what's his name michael rooker's character yep and just like smashes his head on the corner of a brick thing on the floor like, until he's just fucking just, his back of his head is just like, mush put up into the back of his head yeah he's just fucked up that was, pretty, that was pretty cool. I was like, God damn, this just got fucking serious. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Kevin Bacon says, fine, you can have the girl, but then lies because he's the bad guy and starts shooting Frank. And so Frank uses his high-powered projectile to shoot some spikes into Kevin Bacon's nards. <laughs> and then says, uh, what does he say to him? Shut up, crime. 
<laughs> and then blows his fucking head off. Yep. And so, yeah, he takes Sarah home. He rescues her and they have a good two months together and she goes back to rehab and then she marries a, a new guy and they have kids and Frank now has a bunny and he, he looks at pictures on the wall from his kids. The, her, her, sorry, not his kids, Sarah's kids with the other guy who call him Uncle Frank and, yeah, he, he has a bit of a cry and the film ends. Yeah. That was super. So, yeah, let's run an ad and then we'll come back and we'll, uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey you, avid podcast listener, do you like pop culture? Of course you do. That's why you're listening to this fine Cabana product. If you want to hear three grown gentlemen discuss the finer things in pop culture, tune in to the Karma Iguana podcast. Find us on iTunes and all fine purveyors of podcastery. We can't promise that we're the most informed podcasts, but at least we're a podcast. Well... Well, at least we try to be funny. Well... Sometimes. I must admit, I think the Karma Iguana have the catchiest jingle behind their their ad. Oh, you're not wrong. All right. Very catchy. Hopefully returning with new episodes soon, the Karma Iguana. Uh, I know that uh, Paddy, one of the hosts there, has just recently had a, had a son, so that takes up a lot of his time. Oh, indeed it does. So I'm sure as soon as the kids uh, in college, we'll hear back from them. <laughs> but in the meantime, Braden, uh, super... Here's my takeaway from this. This was going really cool, and I could even handle it going away and having a better life. But he's just sitting there crying, which is like I thought it was all. I thought they were going to reveal it was all in his head or something. But he just gives up. Like he's like, well, no point in being a superhero anymore. Um, no, I think it was like a happy cry because he went from sort of having two moments and to having like all these moments because he had all these fucking pictures on the wall so i think they yeah, were all taking sort of credit for other people's moments like he's like yeah because i saved her i get all these kids moments too and i kind of get that but at the same time bro you got to live your life yeah but... you're a rabbit now like you still got to get out there oh yeah true i think he's sort of his life is just living through her kids um you know he sort of feels like well you know i loved her i still love her I'm happy that she's not, you know, with fucking Kevin Bacon um, and just on drugs and getting fucked all the time. And, you know, she's got loving husband, kids. He's happy for her and that makes him happy. And um, he's just happy with that. You know, he feels like he did that. That's his accomplishment because he saved her. I thought, yeah. it, was, I thought it was okay, that ending. I didn't... It wasn't great. I'll admit, it was not great. But I liked that it was different. It wasn't your typical they lived happily ever after type thing. You know, she... I guess, I guess, I could, I, I could, I could have handled it if, like, I get the ending they wanted to go for, but if it had been a thing of like either he inspired one of the kids to become a superhero, he kept being, or he'd found a way to keep being a hero in everyday life as well without needing his costume or something. But his, he goes through a hero's journey to just sit on his bed. Yeah, that's the part for me. Where I'm like, this just feels very anticlimactic. It feels like I went on this huge journey for nothing. I don't It'd be like if you got to the end of RoboCop and he was just like, well, I beat Ed 209, so I'll just shoot myself in the face. I don't think it was a case of he just, you know, went through the hero's journey to sit on his bed. He went through the hero's journey and now he's got all these moments in life that... Because his life before was sad and pathetic. He had two fucking perfect moments and that was it. Yeah, now he's got a fucking wall full of, you know, he's happy with his life and what he's done with his life and stuff like that now, you know? He's happy with who he is as a person um, yes, maybe maybe the deep philosophy of James Gunn is being lost to me in this one. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was a nice ending. It was nice. What What was your favorite moment in the film overall? Favorite moment. Um, I'd probably have to say Libby getting her head blown off. Wow, really? Maybe. Um, it's hard. Either that or yeah, I don't know. That's how there's just there was a few but there wasn't a lot of moments that I thought, wow, this movie's intense. Um, there was a handful, but I don't know. I felt like this movie didn't really know exactly what it wanted to be. 
Mm-hmm. Like it sort I of, can see that. yeah, it sort of started off like comedic, and then you know went kind of brutal, and then went back comedic, and then sort of went a little bit serious, and it didn't sort of flow at all. No. Um, no. No. Yeah, no. So in terms of sort of what it was and what it was supposed to be, um, if it had sort of started off, you know, a little bit funny and serious or like there and then moved into being like, holy fuck, everything's fucked up and um, mm-hmm. and sort of kept going like that and just sort of kept escalating and then you had the ending, I guess that would have been okay because it would have sort of progressed. But it's sort of, you know, it was... A little bit of humor, a little bit of seriousness, and then a little bit more humor, and then oh, something fucked up happened. Then back to the seriousness, and then yeah. and then yeah, I don't know. I, I found all the scenes with Libby in them were probably my favorite, like my favorite parts of the film. Her yeah. energy was really infectious, and I think just the hilarity of just how foul mouthed she is constantly, even when he tells her to stop swearing, and she still goes off. Oh, she's intense. She's fucking intense. <laughs> I've seen a lot of crazy shit in films. I've never seen a chick in a superhero costume <laughs> rape a guy <laughs> in another superhero costume. That is some of the weirdest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird. That was some. That was some fucked up shit. Um, you said this to me sort of off off air prior to us recording that you reckon that the casting and this is perfect. Um, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like, uh, <laughs> like I say, you've got Nathan Fillion as the Holy Avenger, who is just cracking me up every time he came on the screen. <laughs> the hair, it's the hair over the costume. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's so. And just... his voice, his voice too, yeah. is great. Um, uh, as I say, like I couldn't believe I'm sitting there, like, because first of all. Like I say, before the credit, I actually really like the opening credits. So I'll get to that in a sec. But the the teaser scene before the credits kind of run, I'm like, man, Liv Tyler's in there. Like I'm seeing Michael Rooker's in this. I'm like, all these fucking people are in this film. Whose movie is this? <laughs> and then as soon as the credits started playing and there's this full animated dance sequence and shit, I'm like, hey, it's a James Gunn film. <laughs> uh, I like the fact that the animation ends with them all out of breath as well. Yeah, that's funny. I like that. That was pretty clever. Um, yeah, the cast is just crazy. And none of them are afraid to look stupid either. Like, Michael Rooker always kind of looks dumb in this. He looks fucking retarded. That hair, man. It's, it's glorious. And you can see where the uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy team up of him and, and Sean Gunn yep. came from in this film. Yeah, absolutely. Because the comedy with each other is so <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. Uh, I, yeah, I like the, as I say, I like the, the cutaways of all the public access television of um, the Holy Avenger and his sidekicks. I especially like the one where they nearly give in to the, the demons of premarital sex. <laughs> That's what I sort of mean. Like, this movie doesn't know where it was, what it was supposed to be, because those were like, those were hilarious. And, you know, you see the whole scene where he gets touched by f- the fucking finger of God on his brain. <laughs> the very tip. The very tip. very tip of his God's finger and is even too much for the human mind to comprehend. Yeah, and like, I don't know, they just, I, I feel like maybe they maybe needed to touch on that a little bit more, or maybe... <laughs> so you would have liked more than just the tip of the tip. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, because he, he was like, I don't know if it was real or not, and it was kind of cool that they didn't really tell us, but he kind of... After that, you know, where did he get all these fucking skills from? How was he able just to beat the shit out of anyone and, you know, take a bullet and fucking just blow cunts up and shit? I, uh... I I love the fact that he's flicking through channels and tentacle porn comes on. Yeah! Yeah, that was weird. I literally what the fucked out loud when that happened. (laughs) 
and there was parts in the movie as well where they sort of showed the comic book animations like you know the wham bam pow type thing mm-hmm. and it just felt out of place because they did yeah, like two maybe it, three it wasn't times. in the first half it, it only came in in the second half of the film i think they did it maybe once in the first half yeah, which isn't Maybe. enough. You need to like if you're going to do that, you got to Scott Pilgrim versus the world it and have it be constantly throughout. Yeah, yeah. So it just felt out of place. Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess what what feels weird about this film is that it feels like it's meant to be kind of an anti superhero film, where the point is meant to be being a superhero would be fucking stupid. Yeah, but they don't really get that moral across. No, not at all. Like, there's not even really a news report at the end that's like, Bolty gave her life or anything like that. She's Her body's just left there. Yeah. It's just no repercussions for anything that he does, which is fucking insane. Especially given the fact the that cop there's... works it out. Yeah. I know he gets blown away, like, straight away when he works it out anyway, but... And there was no consequence of that either. What's that? There was no consequence of that either. There's no consequence of anything. A cop got shot inside his fucking apartment that he then goes home to live in. And no one gives a fuck. Yeah. The Jacques Doesn't... Ranch gets pretty much fucking blown to shit. It All definitely these... does. Yeah. Got bomb into another fucking realm. And they no... will have gone in there and found they will have found Kevin Bacon with ninja stars in his junk. Yeah. How's that gonna look in a coroner's report? Exactly. Come on, James Gunn, you're better than this. Yeah, uh, and then fucking Bolty just laying in the Outside with fucking half her face missing. Yeah. Like, Looking like Two-Face gone wrong. Two-Face IRL. It wouldn't have been that hard to sort of track it back to him being her sidekick, given the fact that when he rocked up at her party, dressed in fucking... He, he to everybody as Frank. That's what it felt like it was leading towards, was him going to prison at the end. Yeah. See, that would have been the funny if it was that he kept getting these cards and sticking them on his prison cell wall because he's in prison because he went on a fucking rampage. Yeah, exactly. That would have been hilarious. Would have made a bit more sense. But yeah, no, there's just no consequences whatsoever. No consequence. And a film without consequences is pointless. Hmm. It's, it's, it really is. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know. It was entertaining. It was yeah. definitely a what the fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's a, Well, I mean, it's a James Gunn film. Most of his films are a little bit what the fuck. Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy 1 and 2 are both still... Of all the Marvel films, they're the ones that you do kind of go, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> they stole that guy's leg. <laughs> oh, shit. Interested to see how much this movie made. It uh, Its budget was $2.5 million. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. It tanked. 4000 222 yeah 422,000 dollars is all it made so it didn't even make back <laughs> of the budget wow it tanked and yet his next film after this was guardians of the galaxy yeah which was amazing how fucking crazy is that <laughs> but that also had a really good script yeah that's true I uh, I got to give shout outs to Kevin Bacon. He's always able to play like a different kind of fucking scumbag. Yeah, he's perfect. None of his scumbags like are ever the same. No, nah, they're, they're really not. And they could have done a bit more with him. Sort of all they really did was, yeah, he's a drug dealer and he stole the girlfriend. And as far as I... He was drunk all the time. Was he... Because I felt like Kevin Bacon was playing him as drunk all the time. Oh, Probably. Um, I sort of got the impression that they were using her to sort of test different drugs or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, they didn't really explore what was going on. No. Nah. I didn't really understand why, like, five dudes were crowded around while they injected her foot with fucking whatever. Yeah. See, and if they'd explain that, at least there would be more stakes and stuff. They just really weren't stakes or... I don't know, like, like the only character who really felt three-dimensional to me was uh, Bolty. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, she's the one that gets the full journey. She actually gets the what it would really happen to you if you became a hero's journey. Yeah, exactly. Fucking face get your face off. blown the fuck off because you're not wearing armor and that guy had a shotgun. <laughs> oh, shit. I love shotgun th- wins every time. Yep. I did like how she was like, mm, get some fucking claws like Wolverine, and then you see her just like fucking mowing cunts down. Hacking gonna do down. Yeah. I actually thought that was what it was going to be, was that she hadn't actually got shot. She fell over and stabbed herself with her Wolverine claws. Yeah. 
that was going to be the gag, but yeah, the half face thing was. I know we keep coming back to that, but that was some Gus Fring Breaking Bad level shit right there. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I just did not see that coming. I just thought, oh yeah, she'll be right. Um, she'll get up and yeah, but fuck me, that was that was amazing. That was amazing. Good special effects there. Yep, that's where I think the majority of the budget probably went. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I don't really know what else there is to say about this one. No, not not really. Um, I'm thinking think, maybe maybe should we throw it to a, another ad and then just give it our final thoughts. Sounds good. Do you hate dumb shit? Well, me too. Join me over at BAM TV where I make fun of all sorts of stuff with my segments of bad news and cringy capers, plus other skits and shenanigans. Head over to facebook.com slash B-A-M-T-E-E-V-E-E for more info and all the links to the videos. All right, yeah, Braden, uh, do you watch BAM TV? Um, well, that guy's got a pretty sweet sound of voice, I've got to tell you that, so... Uh, yeah, I reckon I might have to check him out. Yeah, um, I would. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give. Every, I'll give our listeners a little bit of here first insight. Um, <laughs> this, yeah, you would have heard in the ad. I do a couple of segments, cringy capers and bad news. Um, been doing them for a little while. I've got a new segment starting soon. That's right, folks. You heard it here first. A new well, segment. Do we are we going to announce what that segment is, or is that the teaser? Well, I don't know. Should I announce what the segment is? I think I will. I will. For our listeners, I will. Um, so the new segment is called Lackluster Lyrics. Nice. Where, and so what are we going to find in Lackluster Lyrics? Well, Shitty songs? Yeah. So following the same formula of just making fun of dumb shit. Um, and yeah, making fun of song lyrics. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Well, be sure to tune in for that one. But Braden, let's get back to putting a pin in Super. What do you reckon was the worst... Worst, the worst performance or the worst part about the film? Worst performance or worst part? Um, I think Sarah was really underutilized. Mm-hmm. Considering... Tyler. Yeah, considering like the whole thing was supposed to be about saving her. Yeah. There was sort of a part of the movie when um, Libby came along where there was sort of just no focus on her whatsoever. Yep. Um, I don't know. It didn't really feel like she was just in, like in much danger. It was just that they were keeping her drugged up all the time. Didn't really know what was going on. So I just felt like she was really underutilized. Yeah, I've got to give my one to um, just checking. Okay, it is James Gunn. Um, mine goes to James Gunn, not for the direction, because he wrote the script, which means he really should have known better. Yeah. You know. Uh, but hey, we can't we can't win everything. He went on to give us Guardians of the Galaxy. So forgive him. Thank you. Uh, What was the best part for you? I think the way um, Frank and Libby interacted with each other was fantastic. That's pretty good. I see. I've 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 actually got a three way tie because everything Libby did cracked me up the whole way through. (laughs) Uh, Michael Rooker is just on another level in this film, (laughs) but Nathan Fillion. Like I say, every time that guy was on screen, I could not stop just laughing and smiling at just how much he was just like, this is who I am and this is my life. Like He's like fucking Batman in the 66 where Adam West is just, you're just like, Adam West is eating the scenery. He's so in character. <laughs> Nathan Fillion felt like he was doing here. Oh, true that. So yeah, what do you, what do you watch? Don't watch. Watch it. Um, yeah, you don't expect the sort of shit that happens in it to happen. It is sad that it's not very consistent and there's not really... Yeah, the script's not great. No. But the characters are funny. There's a lot of funny moments. Um, There's a lot of what-the-fuck moments. Well, sorry, there's a few what-the-fuck moments. I wouldn't say there's a lot, but there's a few. Um, Yeah, I'd say watch it. What do you give it out of five? I think I'm, like, right in the middle with this. Two and a half out of five. Yeah, I'm, I would say watch it because it's interesting to see. To me, this feels like the beta test for Guardians of the Galaxy. Like he had no money and had to do a demo reel to prove he could make Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. 
but in terms of watch, yeah, watch it. What would I give it? Maybe I don't think I'd give it t- probably two out of five. Yeah, like it's not. It's enjoyable, but yeah, 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 yeah. It's not great. No, it's not. But yeah, actors are good. Characters are all right. Oh. It's yeah, it's worth watching it just for the actors in this, just having the like greatest times of their lives in these performances. <laughs> Absolutely, definitely. Check it out. So, Braden, are you ready to hear what we're going to be looking at next week? I'm very excited to hear what we're looking at next week. All right. Well, we've uh, we've actually got a few weeks coming up uh, after next week, but we're going to have some guest some guest hosts coming in to do some stuff with us. But I thought before that, why don't you and I go back to the roots of what the first thing we started on this podcast was. We started with Harold Kumar. So I thought, you know what? We need a buddy comedy. So we're going to watch basketball because last week your brain, well, not last week, I should say, back in the Space Jam episode, your brain was obsessed, (laughs) obsessed with basketball. So we're going to watch basketball and we are going to, I don't know what we're going to think of it. Yeah. I've seen it. It has been a while since I've seen it. I'm keen. I'm pretty keen to watch it. So next week will be basketball. Uh, This one a bit more of a condensed episode than normal, but I think that kind of sums up the two and a half out of five stars, really. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that wraps us up for this week. Thanks very much for joining us here on What the Fuck Did I Just Watch? I've been Adam. And I'm Brayden. And we will see you next week for basketball. Shut up, crime. Yeah. So, uh, Brayden, if you want my love, you've got it. Um, <laughs> this movie, though, doesn't have my love. I no. won't lie. It's, it's got my like. It's it's got my like. It's good for a root and boot, but I'm not having it back in my house more than one night. Like, really. would you wear a superhero costume and rape it? <sighs> no, I don't even think I'd go to that extent. I think I'd like. This is the sort of this is the sort of film I'm not buying breakfast for the next morning. Like I'm telling her to get out that night. You know what I mean? Would you? Would you? If if this movie dressed in a superhero costume and raped you, would you then go and vomit? Probably not, but that's because I kind of have a little bit of a superhero costume fetish. Yeah. So, um, probably not. No, I would probably just be like, huh. What if you... Right. But also, that I'd also be like, I just got raped by a movie that was weird. It'd be like, I imagine what it's like to fuck Ego in Guardians 2. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair enough. And he got what about him, he got what would you do if this movie raped you in a superhero costume? Um, if this movie raped me, I don't know. I would have mixed emotions, I think, because <laughs> because it, this movie didn't really know what it was. So it depends on, I guess. See, I think this movie is the kind of thing where if it did rape you, like you'd have a safe word and it'd start sticking your finger up the butthole and you'd be like, well, we're saying the safe word, but it'd still get three knuckles deep before it stopped. Yeah, yeah, it would, definitely. That's what I feel like. Yeah, for sure. This has been a Cabana production. Hey, Bat fans, it's the Dad Knight here coming to you from the Bat Cave. Coming soon will be new and improved episodes of From the Bat Cave featuring the other members of the Just Us League Red Thunder, The Probe. LL Cool Elder and myself as we bring you weekly video casts featuring DC on TV shows such as Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl and Legends of Tomorrow plus all the latest comic book movies and much much more. Head to www.frombatcave.com for all the info and links to our episodes. That's www.frombatcave.com. Hope to see you there bad fans.